I'm going to show you how do you take a table that's in this format and put it in a regular table format. Uh, and the method I'm going to show you is with the hlookup function. It's very similar to the vlookup, uh, but instead of returning columns, it returns rows. So I'm just going to get right into it. Um, before you do that, though, if you want to take something like this and put it in something like this, in this format, you need to manually create these columns here and then to pull the values that's where the formula would come in so this is a little more work but I'm just going to show you how useful the hlookup function is so you type hlookup the value you want is going to be for your headers here so uh, we're going to just put the date because you're going to be looking up this value in the table array which is going to be this only because we want to find the value here and then we want to return a row underneath one of these. So we're just going to lock that in with F4 and then go on to the row index. Row index is saying, okay, now that we have, say, 1 slash 3, we're going to be looking under this column. Now we want to return a particular row here. And that's going to be determined by the stock, this value in G3. So in order to get the row number for that, because that's going to, what that's what's it going to go by we're going to uh, do the match function so match is going to take this value and look it up in an array here and we want to include the first row because we want the actual row number here if we pick just from Monday to or mon M O N to A A it would give one even though it's the second row but if we include the stock it would give us two which is the second row uh, it goes on your selection here and not by the row number but we want the row number so that's where we're including stock and then we're gonna do an exact match uh, we're doing an exact match because uh, something like this a and aa would return uh, an na if we didn't put anything in here so we're just gonna close that out so now we have our match function and then our range lookup um, it's going to put true and then close it off. Um, wow, there you go. We have our value for Monday right there. Or Mon, I don't know what it is. It's just some stupid value. So we have our date and our value that we're looking up at, and we're returning this, this piece of information from this table. And if we have our data structured in this format, we can just drag this down, and it all populates. Uh, one of the cool things though, if you wanted to just have like a snippet of this somewhere else, say you have like some picker here, if you had a drop down, if you implemented some drop down, you could just change that dynamically, or you could just type it in, for example, September, you know, get a new value here. Now, if you had tons of dates, that's where the, this, is, this would come handy, come in handy, because then you could just look up that particular value and say, so if I had another date here. <coughs> And let me just change this to add another column there. And I'll add in uh, another date, right? I'll call it the sixth. And then add in like a value like hello, just so we can see something. And then I change this back to this value. And then I change this to six. And wow, look at that. It's very dynamic. So you can see how this will come in handy if you're just trying to look up one particular value and your table is structured in this format. Um, and if you wanted to put it your table that you get in this format in this format, you got to do a little bit of legwork and then you can just use this formula to populate the values.